All right. Well, thanks for joining us. It's uh, the third Wednesday in the month. It's 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific, where my man Jake Hirschfield is joining us from unshuffled.io. And over here at Rec Poker, uh, this is going to be a fun night. We're going to be talking about Badugi. Uh, every month, Jake comes and visits Rec Poker Nation and uses his amazing platform, Unshuffled, to uh, demonstrate the rules of a different mixed game. And then the next month, uh, that's the mixed game that John Somsky puts into the rotation for our uh, annual player of the year race, where everyone gets to come and compete in uh, what next month will be Badugi. So first of all, Jake, thanks for coming and uh, spreading, the, spreading the love of mixed games here. This is great to have you. Yeah, of course, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and uh, you're doing, so unshuffle.io, if people don't know, is a fantastic place to go. You can play against uh, bots in challenges and enter for free and win real prizes. And you can also play with your friends in kind of a social environment. Um, why don't you tell folks just a little bit about uh, Unshuffled and some cool events that you've got coming up? Sure. So, you know, we started, started Unshuffled, but it, um, two years ago, almost, um, originally with the, the uh, intention of creating a place where people could play any game that they wanted with their friends over video and audio. Um, you know, we love mixed games in my household. And so that's kind of, that's kind of what we were trying to build is a place for people to play the games that they had come to love to play with their friends when COVID started, being able to play them online. It has since evolved into that plus a place for people to be able to play whenever they have free time in a weekly challenge, uh, some of the more traditional games like Texas Hold'em or Omaha or High Low Omaha. Um, and uh, we're really excited about a Unshuffled Cup series of events, which is our attempt at quantifying how good you are compared to the rest of the people that you're playing against. Because as we all know, it's hard to determine which player is the best in short periods of time, you have to look at a large body of work over a long period of time to really remove variance. And uh, with my group of friends, we're all recreational. We're not that serious about poker, but we are very serious about beating each other and then talking about how we beat each other in poker. Nice. And nice. we want to have proof of who's the best. So the Unshuffle Cup series uh, is going to start on May 5th. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about the mechanics a little later on, but it's kind of a unique approach to playing poker where you're playing against bots, but every player is playing the same card. So the only difference from table to table is how you play each hand and how the computer players react to the way that you play. Nice. Well, I can't wait to uh, get into that. And it does sound like a pretty cool way to test your metal against uh, the other players out there, right? Uh, exactly. And John Somsky, who's the uh, home games director here at Rec Poker, um, you know a little bit about Badoogie. You've played it before. It's actually your favorite game, I hear. Is that right? Yeah, it is one of my favorite uh, mixed games. It's Probably of all of the mixed games that we play in for rec poker, it's the one that is the least poker. <laughs> I mean, you actually don't use poker, hand, traditional poker hand rankings for it. Uh, so it is a little bit different that way. But much of the skill and the betting and everything else that goes along with it is very much in the spirit of poker. Cool. Um, and so Jake's going to uh, use his Unshuffled platform and sort of take us through the mechanics of the game. And uh, John's going to be here to weigh in on some of the questions about strategy and uh, the best way to play certain hands and that sort of thing. And then we're all going to get together next month and uh, play in the Rec Poker free play money home game and earn some points towards the player of the year race. And maybe one of these, uh, one of these fancy pins. You never know. Someone's got to win them. They'll let anybody win them, apparently. All right, Jake, why don't you take us through uh, what some people might experience if they're playing Badoogie. And first of all, my first question is, is it as fun to play as it is to say out loud? That is a good question. I'll defer to John. I, I personally think it's a really fun game as well. I've only played it a few times. I'm by no means a Badoogie expert, but it is pretty fun to say. I think it's really fun to play, but I, it, it's, it's similar to a, a low ball game and in philosophy or whatever and i really have always liked low ball games mm. awesome so jim do you want me just to go ahead and kick things off yeah sounds good man all right so can you guys can see my screen already yeah, yeah it looks good yep all right great so um we're on a shuffle the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our badoogie template because uh, it's not one of the custom uh, the the preloaded default templates that we have although we'll probably add it after 
uh, this call. Um, to do that, we'll just go ahead and click on start creating. And we're just gonna start from a blank board. The way that the game is set up is actually quite simple. There aren't any community cards. Uh, each player is dealt four cards face down. Um, and just like in Omaha. Uh, and then uh, after that, we'll set the deal order. It's just the first deal. So we'll set that to one. Um, go to our custom settings. We'll leave it standard. I'm gonna just call this call Jake's. That's cool. That's it. Um, after that, we'll go ahead and host a room. Uh, typically, what, what kind of um, settings do you see in a Badooki game online or like at a casino? Do they play Badooki in Vegas? Uh, I, I, they do, but only at limits that are way above my pay grade. Got it. We'll just do uh, 100 minimum, maximum buy-in. We'll turn dealer's choice on, and we'll do it a uh, one-two game. How does that sound? Just to make sure. it simple. Cool. We'll leave everything the way it is. We'll go ahead and click play now. Um, as is the case with Unshuffled, you can just copy the link and share it with any of your friends, and they can join without having to sign in. Or you can use this trusty room code here, which is what I am going to do. So I'm going to add that really quick and get some other players involved. Get three players involved, just so we have a couple of other players playing. So, Jake, you're uh, just logging in on some devices there at your place. But if you had, you know, if you had any friends, they'd uh, be playing with you here. Uh, you just shared that code with them. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then we'll go ahead, and we've got these are guest users. Hal Jordan. You can see the end is different. Uh, so these players haven't created accounts yet, but. Only the, the host has to have a, an account in order to play with friends. Oh, sweet. Just to make it easier to play, because you know, the night of you're, you're playing your game, you've got, you're trying a new platform, you're sending out the room code. It, it's right. just going to hold everyone up trying to like create accounts and sign in. So we just said, just sign up later. You can just play without having to sign up. That's a great feature. Uh huh. Go ahead and turn off the volume on these things, because we don't want that. So Unshuffled, we have the video integrated into the platform. You can see the video on my screen here. Doesn't really make sense to have it on both this and on the Zoom. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and I'll speed things up as well. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn my volume off on this guy so we don't have extra noise. And we're gonna go ahead and click Start Hand and we're gonna choose Badoogie, which uh, we created just now. And we'll go ahead and load the game. Awesome. So, um, and please jump in, correct me if I'm wrong, or if you guys have anything else you want to add. But Doogie is a uh, low game. And uh, as John said at the beginning, the card rankings um, don't really have any semblance to traditional poker that we are all familiar with. Um, you're trying to create what's called a Badoogie, which is a, a four card hand with no pairs and no cards of the same suit. And your goal is to get the lowest set of four cards as possible. So the best hand, the best Badoogie is ace, two, three, four, uh, all offsuit. suit. Um, ace is always low in Badoogie, so it's never high. Um, and uh, the next best hand would be ace, two, three, uh, ace, two, three, five, all off suit, and so on and so forth. Um, you cannot have pairs and you cannot have two cards of the same suit. Uh, if you do have a pair or two cards of the same suit by the end of the final round of betting, uh, you actually just knock off one of those cards and it's the, you would have a three card hand. Um, and any four card hand always beats a three card hand. So as an example, if you had ace, two, three, three, and someone else had ace, two, uh, six, king, all off suit, the ace, two, six, king off suit, Badoogie beats the ace, two, three, three every time. That's that's the my general. I want to make sure I've got it all right because it's it's a yep. complicated. If you've never played the game, okay, cool. It's all good. Cool. 
So um, once the cards are dealt, uh, <laughs> you start with a betting round. It's just a traditional betting round um, as you would play with any blinds games. It always starts with the player directly to the left of the big blind. So in this case, it's going to be me. So I'm going to click blind, uh, betting round. I'm going to go ahead and just call and check with these other players. Whoops. Um, hold on one second. One technical difficulty here. And Jake, when uh, when we weren't trying to, you know, preserve bandwidth here for the show, each of those little circles would be uh, the player's camera in their face, and uh, you'd be able to, you know, I think that's one of the things we've really enjoyed playing in a lot of our learning sessions here at Rec Poker is to be the ability to sort of like look at your friend while you're playing and exchange that. It makes it feel more like a, a real poker experience. That's exactly right. So if I turn on the video screen on any of these screens, like as you have the video here, I have it turned off right now. But when I turn it on, yeah, your video would appear. Yeah, it's exactly right. That's cool. I love it. Okay, thank you for bearing with me there. Once the um, first betting round is over, you move to the first draw round. And there's three draw rounds um, in Badoogie, assuming all players haven't stood pat, which I'll get to in a second. Um, so in a draw round, players have the opportunity to discard as many cards as they want. Um, we'll go ahead and start a turn round, which on Unshuffle just means you can execute certain actions like discarding cards. So we'll go ahead and click turn around. Um, this first player will decide how many cards they want to discard. So let's just say I'm this player. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of two cards. And then uh, they can click done. Um, it would move on to the next player as a dealer. I would deal that player two cards because they need four cards in their hand. And the next player will decide whether or not they want to discard cards or not. So this next player also going to discard two cards. And again, the goal is to get rid of your high cards, any paired cards, any paired suits, because you can't have any of those to make your Badoogie um, your best four card hand. Uh, we'll go ahead and click done with this player. Before we discard our cards, we're going to give this player their two cards because they need two cards. And, and now it's our turn. So we love our three. That's a great card. We like the king of clubs. Uh, we want to get rid I'm oh, sorry, we don't like the king of clubs. It's a high card. We're going to get rid of that one for sure. And probably going to get rid of the nine of, nine of diamonds as well. And then, John, I'm not sure as far as strategy goes, is the eight of diamonds an okay card because they're both off suit, or would you get rid of that one as well? I'd probably keep the eight of diamonds. Got it. So we're going to keep the eight of diamonds. Um, we're going to go ahead and finish that for ourselves, and then we'll go ahead and give ourselves two more cards because we're the dealer. Oh, we love the four of clubs. That's great. All right, we're getting there. So after that, we would do another betting round, um, which we can start here. Again, it's going to start now with the player to left of the dealer, the small blind. Um, we're just going to, for the sake of this game, we're just going to check for these hands just to keep things moving along here. Check, check, and we're going to check as well. So after that, we do another draw round, and then there would be one more draw round. Um, in Badugi, when it is your turn to draw cards, which we will do again, and let's just say as this other player, it's, you know what, I've got four great cards. I think I have a good hand. Um, you can decide not to draw any cards, and that's called standing pat. It's also a great mechanism for bluffing. Uh, you might have a pretty good three-card hand, but maybe you have a paired card or you have two, two cards of the same, but you're trying to trick some of the other players and tell them, hey, you know what, actually I have a great, great four-card hand and I'm already out. Um, you can stand pat and that's kind of one of your mechanisms for bluffing when it comes to Badoogie. And we could talk a little bit more about strategy probably after we finish the whole uh, walkthrough of the game. But in this scenario, this player is just gonna stand pat. So they're gonna say, I'm done. Um, this player isn't quite as happy with their card. So they're gonna get rid of one and then they'll be done. So we'll have to give them one more card. And it's our turn and we've got two paired hearts. Um, so we're going to get rid of one of our hearts. We're just going to get rid of the six. And hopefully we can get another off-suited card. Okay, so we have a Badoogie now, which is great and awesome for the demonstration. Um, there'd be one more betting round. Um, 
And then we would do one more discard round, uh, one more round of, of discarding cards, in which case we would have the opportunity to scan Pat. Um, let's just skip the betting round. We'll go straight to the turn round again. Let's just say that first player had will be some Pat, the next player. Let's just do it. Why not? We're not in any rush. We'll go ahead and do a turn around. This player stood pat already. This player is going to get rid of one card. And then we'll click done. So we have to give this player one more card. And because we have our Badugi, we're going to actually stand pat. And I'm, my understanding is any Badugi is actually a pretty strong hand in this game, especially with only three players. As you get more players, obviously it becomes less valuable, but like this is a great hand. In fact, we probably would raise in, in normal circumstances. Um, so we are gonna go ahead and click done. And then there'll be one more betting round. Uh, and then we would uh, show cards and see who the winner is. Um, so at this point, we're trying to determine which, which player has the best four card hand and it's the best low hand. Um, so we'll go ahead and show all the hands here and we can talk through the different four card and three card hands that we have on the table. So um, we've got this player up here on the top left who has a terrible set of cards because they have two pair jacks and three diamonds. So they're out of the hand. Normally they wouldn't be in it. This player who's got um, a king, a pair of eights and a five of clubs. So they'd have an okay three badoogie, probably not that good because if you're going down to a three carded hand, it needs to be pretty strong. A king is pretty high. Um, and then obviously we've got our Badugi, which is a four card hand, all different suits with the queen high. Um, so we're gonna win that, that hand. So we'll go ahead and just click and hand, select winners. We're gonna pick ourselves as the winner, distribute the pot and that's it, that's Badugi. And one of the things that I think is so cool, we talked about this in an earlier episode of the unshuffled mixed game demo here. Um, it's just how you've sort of trained the system to play the games you know you as the dealer it's just like if you are in your own home game you're going to be you're you're dealing the cards you're you know you know shoving the chips towards the winner and uh this platform just gives you like the mechanics to do that um online and and uh from from away instead so i think that's very cool so the where are the my question is like where are like the threshold hands or what are the kinds of hands that are, or, or uh, in, in a non-obvious way, obviously, like are there certain ones that it's just like, I'm only ever calling with these, I'm never raising with them or something like that? So from my, my perspective, if you're playing in a full ring Badoogie game, where a full ring is usually six to seven players, you normally don't go beyond seven oh, because yeah. you can run out of cards. Right. Um, so in a full ring Badooki game, you typically in earlier position, position still matters in Badooki, you want to have at least three decent cards. And I, my rule of thumb is you want three cards, seven or better mm -hmm. to start playing. In later position, you can get down to, and if you ever watch me play Badooki, I play way more hands than that, and I should <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but uh, in later position, you can start to open up with your two car hand, two card hands. If you have two to the wheel, so a four three, four two, four ace, uh, you can play with that as well. Um, one of the things you can do. So if you look at the combinations, there are twenty four combinations of the wheel. That's the ace through four. Um, with all of the different suits because you have to be four suited rainbow suits and four different numbers whereas once you get up to kings there are 5280 variants of kings <laughs> so you can see how much more powerful a four is than a king as a matter of fact the median hand that is a four card badugi is jack high so that means half of the badugis are greater than half jack high, including some jack high, and half mm. are lower than jack high, including some jack high. So once you start getting into your sixes, your sevens, your eights, they're very strong hands. Um, they can lose, you know, unless you have a four high, you're not guaranteed to win. Right. But, you know, anytime you're sitting on a six or a seven, you're doing pretty good. And the same types of rules 
if you have someone with an ace deuce three versus someone with a king high padugi, the king high padugi across three draws is favored to win by the end of the pot, but not by much. Hmm. So, you know, if you get dealt a Pat Badoogie, you almost never go against it unless it looks like the table is giving you something to say that they've drawn stronger. And then it's just like any other low game. If you're sitting on a King 7 Badoogie and someone looks like they just made something, they probably have something better than a King if they're betting into you. So... You probably want to ditch your king and maybe try drawing for it. And that's where some of the bluffing goes in. If you're sitting on an ace, deuce, three, you might decide to stay pat to see if you can have someone break their badugi to try to get a lower card. But it's tough because when you break that, when you throw your king, let's say you're throwing the king of clubs and you have a diamond heart and spade left in your hand. You have to draw another club. So already there's only 12 other cards in the deck that can fill that. And three of the, you already have three of them. So that means there's really only nine cards that you're drawing to out of the remainder of the deck in that particular case. So it's, it uses all of the same math, all of the same combinations that all of the other lowball games do. Uh, and I think it's lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding man and, and it's uh it's a game where all the information is uh private and closed so there's no common information you don't know anything about your opponent's hand other than how many cards they drew and the amount that they bet or you know made the action that they took right although that's a fair m- <laughs> there's quite that, a bit that should tell you a lot there. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and well that's a great question then so so how do you um how do you analyze the action given that there's no board to compare it to you must always be thinking about it in terms of absolute strength of your hand i guess yeah in in, typically if your opponents are drawing more cards than you are then you want to be betting right so if they're drawing one card or two cards and you are drawing one that means you're ahead of them and you want to keep betting particularly if you have a really strong three card hand um you want to punish them. Like, let's say you have an ace, deuce, three, and no one has a pat badugi yet. You want to punish them and bet as much as you possibly can to uh, punish them to draw for that four-card badugi. And with your three-card badugi, you're sitting just in just as good a shape to get the four-card badugi as they are. And you have better odds because you're, you're going to be smooth with whatever you draw. So if you both have the same queen, your three plays versus maybe they have a seven or a six or something like that. One, one question I have um, for you, John, and this just turned into a, let's ask John about uh, that, how to play Badoogie. <laughs> but uh, how often does a three, three card Badoogie win in a, like a six handed or a four ring game? Uh, it's not uncommon. I would say at least 25% of the time, nobody makes a pat. Badoogie. Got it. Um, Got it. That's just pulling a number out of the air based yeah. on my experience. So I, it could be statistically might be off, but it's a, it's a fair amount of time that no one makes a four card Badoogie. Four card Badoogies are hard to get, uh, but you do have to be careful when you have the higher ones because it's the type of thing, if you are raising with a king high Badoogie, you're only going to be called if you're beat. Mm. You're only going to be raised if you're beat. So, you know, you just have to keep that in mind. It's just like other variants of poker. Um, when you're sitting on a seven, I usually will shuffle the max in, but I've been beaten by sixes there. So, you know, it's uh, it's tough to gauge because it's a closed game. It's really a game about reading your opponents. Uh, another thing is, uh, particularly on poker stars, there's lots of different variants in uh his little he Barry Greenside did, did a short online primer of the doogie and his favorite variant is half pot so the maximum bet is whatever half the pot is um you can't find that played in too many places right now on poker stars it's played in the standard limit format meaning your 
first two rounds, the bet size is the big blind. The second two rounds, the bet size is double the big blind. Um, and then uh, limit game, and usually it's either a four or five uh, raise max. I can't remember which it is. Oh, man, it makes my head spin uh, just thinking about all these different uh, variants. I, it's one of the things I'm trying to do more this year is I dip my toe into more of these mixed games because I'm more of a no limit hold'em player. And uh, I just feel like I'm I'm missing out on all this great stuff. Um, so when you were saying uh, that the three hand, the three uh, card Badoogie wins, you know, sometime uh, at a full ring table as a no limit hold'em player, would you say that's more like as often as ace high gets to show down and wins in no limit terms or uh, more often? No, I would say it's more like how often second pair might win. Yeah. Okay. All right. That helps, that helps us uh, no limit hold them uh, freaks get their head around that a little bit. Cause that what is, about, you know, a non-trivial percent of the time. Yeah. Eric. Uh, what about ties? Um, is, is it just a chop pot or is there like spades? win or no it, it'll be just a chop pot but you do use all four cards so a oh. five four three ace would be a five four three two okay okay even if they were double suited and it was not no 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 it, that's assuming that this is all pure suits okay so what you do is if you have two of the same suit you must choose one of those cards if you have two of the same rank, you may only play one of those cards. But you always choose, if you lay your hands on the table, whatever that best possible hand will be is what it's going to be. So it, let's say you had four aces. Any hand that is not four of a kind will beat <laughs> four aces. Right? That is, I mean, the worst possible hand, obviously, is four kings. But four aces is like, a horrible hand because you have a one card hand because you'd have to throw three of those aces away so you'd always start um it's very rare that a two card hand would win that's very rare and if you're looking at a three card hand it's pretty rare that a three card hand is going to win if it's like not six or better so right. you know if you're sitting there on jack nine eight you basically have no shot. I mean, you always have it. Aberrations happen, yeah. but uh, in reality, that's not a very strong hand. So is that like a, a bluff catching candidate then? It's not something that you'd be like value betting or is it uh, just good enough to be in that? Range? No, because you might be bluff catching with a worse hand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because people will um, often... It is very common that a four card hand will be made and it's very common for that to happen on the last draw. So it is not uncommon to see someone represent a four card hand when they don't have it. Right. So um, I will occasionally bluff catch with a very strong three card hand if someone is, is acting stronger than I think they probably are. So, you know, an uh, ace deuce three is a great bluff catching hand. Amazing. I, I'm, what, I can't wait for this week. Yeah, Eric. What about blockers? What if you have like two twos and two threes? Is that a good hand? Because, you know, the other players don't have Question. twos and threes. That's a good question. Uh, a little bit. Um, the, I can't remember. So for, um, there's, there's a concept called snowing. What snowing is, is when you stand pat for multiple rounds, when you do not have a made hand. Uh, I remember Daniel Negrano said that the only time in deuce to seven single draw, the only time he would snow is if he hit, either had four deuces or four aces. Because in order to have the best possible hand, you have to have one of those cards in your hand. And in no limit, you can put so much pressure on people that they almost cannot call. Uh, in this case, I don't think you really want to snow much at all, meaning not draw. Um, what was your question again, Eric? Oh, just having blockers. How much do you put oh, that? Oh, how much the blockers? It can, particularly across multiple draws. So if you've gotten, 
I mean, there have been hands where I've gotten all four aces in my hand. And then I've gotten, you know, like two or three of the deuces. Oh. Because you're drawing, you know, and mm -hmm. maybe I was drawing two every time. And right. I had an ace and then paired it up. Um, so you can use those blockers to figure out um, what other people might have for hands. Uh, another nice thing is when you, like, let's say you start off with three aces and a deuce. Well, it's not as bad as it sounds because the likelihood that you're going to pair your ace is mm. relatively low. Uh, so yeah. you're more likely to hit cards that will fit into your hand. And and your opponents don't have those aces. Right? Correct. So, yeah. Correct. That is very cool. This is very yeah. cool. Well, Jake, tell us uh, a little more about um, how we can sign up and uh, some of these challenges that are coming up. I'm excited about this cup because everyone always complains that, you know, they got unlucky or you should have seen the call this guy made or whatever. But if you're telling me, and I think you are, that basically everyone that uh, it goes through the program is going to play all the same hands against the same opponents. And the only thing that's going to separate them is their own merit. Because I like the sound of that. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's not a perfect system, of course. I mean, if you really want to prove that you're the best player, go play in, you know, real tournaments, play lots of poker, measure your score, get an HUD, you know, all that stuff. But if you're like me and you're a recreational player and you don't have the time and you just don't want to, you know, spend that much on your poker world, uh, this is where this is kind of nice, a nice option for recreational players. The way that the Unshuffle Cup will work is you just go to unshuffle.io right here. You create an account. And then uh, where it says Unshuffle Cup Beta, there will be just like the challenges a time that counts down. And when you click on Learn More, you'll see there is a Unshuffle Cup standings. And then right now there's no upcoming event. When we do create the first event, there will be a card there where you can join a lobby or register for email notifications or whatever it might be leading up to the event. Um, and yeah, the way it works is once the event begins, um, each player is placed in their own, at their own table. It'll be like between 15 and 30 hands. One of the nice things about these events is uh, the max time it will take to finish. It's about 30 minutes and typically it's more like 20. So if you're crunched on time, this is a great opportunity for you to just play 20 hands of poker pretty quickly. Um, yeah, and each player is going to play the exact same cards and all the players at their table are going to be playing the exact same cards. So, uh, you know, you maybe you're dealt Jack Queen off suit. So is Jim, so is John, so is Roger, so is Eric. And then at their table, the player to the, the computer player left of them will have, you know, King Ace off suit at, at every table. And so you're playing against the same players. You've got the same chance to win as everyone else. Uh, but depending on how you bet, maybe you go all in and all the other all the opponents fold, or maybe you know you slow play and one of the opponents goes all in because you slow played and now you're in trouble. So it's a little more based on the actions that you take and then the reactions of the computer players versus just you know maybe you got lucky on one hand in your weekly poker night with your friends. I know that happens with me and my friends. You know, <laughs> someone always gets lucky and then wins, and then you're like that, that guy. I know that guy is the worst poker player in our group, but somehow he won last week. Um, <laughs> So that's why we're doing it. Uh, and then in the meantime, uh, if you ever want to just come on and play with your friends, Unshuffle is always free. All the challenges, everything is free. You can create an account. Um, you can join the challenges that we run weekly and they're just on the join a challenge button. Uh, you can see there's a hundred dollar prize. Um, I think that's we've got amazing. a decent number of people playing so far. Nothing too crazy. So you have a great chance to win. Um, our last challenge, I think, had about a hundred people playing it. So it's not that many one in a hundred chance to win 50 bucks or a hundred bucks by playing 15 hands of poker is a pretty good opportunity. So um, we think it's a cool, cool app. You can play on your phone, you can play online and we're launching our mobile apps too, which is pretty exciting. So that's coming out here in the next, you know, two weeks or so. Nice. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's real. That's come on, man. That's some real value there. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a life knit in real life. I don't mind telling you. And I, I used to grind those ACR $10 free rolls. That was how I built my ACR bankroll at the beginning. Oh. And you're telling me I can just join for free, play in some of these challenges. And if I play better poker than my opponents, I'm just going to win a cash prize. Like, come on, that's amazing. That's a great way to reward people who are willing to 
put in time and study and, uh, you know, get better at poker and uh, come in and put it to use. So my hat's off to you, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it. We've gotten some good feedback. And, you know, for someone like myself, being able to just play a short like poker challenge when I have free time was just something that I always wanted to be able to do. And so now people can do it and we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, right on. Well, if people like this kind of um, conversation and exploring games like this uh, and learning about poker, I mean, Rec Poker is the place for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video learning about Badoogie and getting to know Jake and John and the rest of the gang here a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, a, a membership at Rec Poker is also free. Uh, head on over to rec.poker and check it out. And uh, thank you, Jake, so much. I can't wait to get to know Badoogie a little more. And uh, John, what's the what's the game next month next month is coming up this one we had limit hold'em and then uh this one's limit badoogie what's on the horizon i have to look that up actually. oh i should have given you <laughs> uh john john only runs john only runs 40 uh 40 tournaments a month here at rec poker in our home game league uh, people can go to uh, rec.poker slash home game if they want to check that out. It's a, a lot of fun there. We don't have limit, can't, can't limit Omaha right. eight or better. Limit Omaha eight or better. Oh, that just sounds like a complicated one. My brain's already hurting. Uh, <laughs> well, that's nice. It's a split pot game. So, that's oh, good. yeah. It has a whole nother layer of, uh, of complexity and double bluff and that sort of a thing. I can't wait. All Price right. It's a chance to win. Twice the chance to win. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. And you get to drop chips around. What, what's Twice what? the chance to win half as much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Jake, thanks again, man. This is great. Um, I have oh, thank a, you guys for having me. I have an awesome time every time we do this. I'll see you in a month, if not before. That's right. See you in a month. All right. Take care, everybody.